Hello guys, Croft is here, today we'll be explaining every single engineer and space jockey featured both on screen and in the comics, and there are 11 of them in total. Throughout the Alien movies, various engineers appeared on the screen, each with a distinct role and mission. Interestingly, some of these figures were omitted from the final cut of Prometheus and can only be found in the Blu-ray edition. Before Prometheus hit the screens, the lore of the space jockey race had been elaborated in the comic books. They were depicted as elephantine beings reminiscent of the iconic figure from the 1979 Alien. Contrary to later interpretations, these early comics showcased the elephantine appearance as their genuine form, not a suit. So let's start with the Apocalypse space jockey. In the comic book Aliens Apocalypse, a team of scientists embarks on an exploration of an alien spacecraft, stumbling upon an ancient space jockey in a state of deep cryosleep. Interestingly, the space jockey was in what's termed as the catatonic suspension, seemingly a more advanced version of cryosleep that works on a molecular level. This particular space jockey had a strategy to endure the xenomorph infestation on his vessel by entering an extended hibernation, in hopes that the xenomorphs and their eggs would die out during his long sleep. However, his plan takes a dark turn when a scientist infects him with an alien embryo. What follows is the emergence of a massive space jockey xenomorph hybrid larger than any xenomorph we've encountered before. The Elephantine Space Jockey in the comic book Aliens Outbreak, the elephantine space jockey stands out as one of the most peculiar depictions of space jockeys. Sometimes referred to as Malak, he possesses the unique ability to telepathically communicate with his own kind, humans and even androids. This portrayal is one of the comic's initial introductions to the space jockeys. Uniquely, only his face is reminiscent of the original space jockey, the remainder of his body is shielded by a metallic exoskeleton that grants him the power to levitate above the ground. Contrary to some of his kind, he doesn't seem aggressive towards humans and even aids the colonial marines in exterminating xenomorphs. However, his assistance comes with ulterior motives, he helps marines to survive so that he can pinpoint Earth's location for a subsequent attack. The Original Space Jockey The Original Space Jockey is a fossilized pilot found by Nostromo crew in a crashed alien derelict on LV-426. Nostromo arrived on this moon to investigate an unknown distress signal, however, their mission was halted when a facehugger attacked Kane. Another group of humans returns on LV-426 decades later in the game Alien Isolation to turn off the distress beacon. The enigmatic pilot of the alien derelict ignited various speculations and theories among the fans about its origin and the origin of the xenomorph. While this intriguing figure lacked an official name, the production team simply nicknamed it Space Jockey, a title that soon became synonymous with the species. Ridley Scott really wanted the space jockey to appear as primordial fossil, possibly millions of years old, indicating that it is ancient beyond human comprehension, just like the horrors that are stored in the ship's cargo. The movie Alien offers very few details about the space jockey, perhaps on purpose, suggesting that humanity may not be prepared for the profound mysteries encapsulated by this colossal being. Interestingly, in early drafts of the original Alien, the space jockeys were envisioned as interstellar explorers who simply stumbled upon LV-426 with alien eggs stored in a giant pyramid. Originally, the space jockeys had nothing to do with the xenomorph narrative, having merely discovered them by accident. However, due to the limitations of runtime, Ridley Scott decided to merge the narrative of the space jockey species and the xenomorphs, positioning the engineer juggernaut as a vessel transporting the alien eggs as lethal weapons. On top of that, Prometheus in the early stages was supposed to make the last surviving engineer on LV-223 as the original space jockey. The initial Prometheus script named Alien Engineers was set on LV-426, showcasing the engineer pilot's unfortunate demise due to a chestburster emergence which caused the crash of the alien vessel. Yet, as the creative process evolved, Prometheus went in an entirely new direction with the production planning to make at least three prequels instead of one. 
The unmistakable resemblance between the Prometheus engineer and the space jockey suggests that they might belong to the same species or at least be closely related. A conspicuous cavity in the chest of the space jockey hints that he was likely implanted with an alien embryo. This embryo burst forth, killing the pilot, and then using its corrosive blood melted a hole in the floor as evidenced by a visible acidic damage nearby. It's speculated that this creature having erupted from the space jockey laid eggs in the cargo hold where Kane later ventured. As mentioned previously, a comic book and a video game feature a colossal xenomorph emerging from the space jockey, suggesting that the creature that emerged from the LV-426 pilot might have been of the same size. Because the original space jockey is noticeably larger than the engineer in Prometheus, this difference suggests that they could be distinct subspecies of the overarching space jockey lineage. The alien vessel's history remains unknown, just like the fact if there were other space jockeys on the ship. The fact that the Juggernaut's airlocks were open, allowing the Nostromo crew to enter, has led many people to theorize that other space jockeys might have fled the ship in the past. As prequels attempted to explain the space jockey's backstory, an intriguing theory has surfaced. The entity inside the original space jockey suit might actually be David. Due to Prometheus, we know that the bone exterior is just a suit, so the question arises, who is inside of the suit of the original space jockey? And there's a good chance that it might be David. In Alien Covenant, the protomorph that David engineered lacks biomechanical traits. With David alluding to the yet-to-be-realized perfect design of his creation, some believe that he might ultimately serve as a host for the birth of the iconic xenomorph. Being an android, his body is composed of a mix of biochemistry and mechanical elements. Therefore, given an exceptionally adaptive nature of xenomorphs, if David is impregnated, this theory suggests that he might give birth to the original alien. The Elder Engineer The Blu-ray deleted scene introduces us to the Elder Engineer, who led the sacrifice ceremony to seed Earth with building blocks of life that eventually led to the emergence of humans. This character's distinct appearance, different from the sacrifice engineer and others, hints at his unique role. From the clues given, it appears that he was the high priest, orchestrating the sacrifice ritual. The early script reveals that engineers have lifespans stretching into hundreds of thousands of years. In Prometheus, the elder engineer acting in his high priest capacity hands the sacrifice engineer an elusive substance, leading him to dissolve into foundational life elements, seemingly the precursors to humanity. The film leaves the nature of this goldish substance ambiguous, but the script unveils it as the blood of the first deacon, a creature responsible for the engineer's reproduction and birthing life on other planets. The deleted scene also briefly showcases two more elder engineers. Their faces might be obscured in the deleted scene, but additional materials offer a closer glimpse. Their appearance suggests that they also occupied priest-like positions subordinate to the high priest. Another interesting detail is that all engineers in the deleted scene appear to be extremely old, except of the sacrifice engineer. The Alien Master narrative used as the foundation for the Prometheus script mentions that the engineer civilization gradually lost the ability to reproduce, which is supported by the fact that there is only one young engineer in the group. The Sacrifice Engineer is the next figure we encounter, and his body becomes the foundational material for life on Earth. Notably younger than his counterparts, it's possible the engineer society selected their most genetically superior individual for this ritual. The engineers seem to have worshipped the deacon, a creature that kills its host, possibly indicating that the sacrifice is the essential belief in the engineer culture. The sacrifice ceremony mirrors various earthy sacrificial practices where an exceptional specimen is chosen for the offering. It's worth noting that the engineers at the start of Prometheus travel in a disc-shaped vessel, in contrast to the craft we observe in Prometheus, Alien Covenant, and other films in the Alien series. 
This distinction might imply that the engineers in the film's opening represent a religious sect, while others we see are more scientifically inclined. The LV-223 engineer, also called the last engineer, stands as the lone survivor of the pathogen incident in the temple on LV-223. Arguably, the most interesting scene in Prometheus centers around the awakening of this engineer, representing the climax of the film where humanity confronts its creator. This anticipated encounter, however, doesn't proceed as expected. In that scene that was ultimately cut from the final version, David, the android, successfully communicates with the engineer. In their interaction, Wayland asks the engineer for the gift of eternal life. But the engineer responds, what makes Wayland so exceptional to warrant such a gift? While the deleted scene only showcases a short exchange, the early draft script dedicates five pages to an in-depth dialogue between Wayland, the engineer, and David, shedding light on the engineer's history and their reasons for deciding to eradicate humanity. And if you're interested in that scene, you might want to watch my video that dives deep into this conversation. It's also worth noting that the engineers introduced in Prometheus were largely based on Anunnaki, a group of Shumerian deities that according to ancient tablets came to Earth and created humans. At certain times in history, Anunnaki were also dissatisfied with their creations, orchestrating various catastrophes to destroy human civilizations. Having been in cryosleep for over two millennia, the last engineer was originally part of a faction set on erasing humanity. Fortunately, their inability to control the pathogen led to a devastating outbreak killing all engineers on LV-223 except this one. As mentioned previously, the opening scene of Prometheus depicts engineers wearing robes, hinting at a religious undertone. In contrast, the last engineer wears a unique biotech suit, perhaps suggesting his association with a scientific faction. This supports the idea that LV-223 was a scientific outpost where engineers developed a bioweapon, the black goo. However, early scripts and extra materials suggest that they were initially trying to replicate the blood of the first deacon, a substance known to create new life, however, they failed. And in their failure, they realized that they created something else, a dangerous pathogen that brings death instead of new life. Similarly to the contrast between science and religion in human society, Prometheus in essence juxtaposes religious beliefs and scientific endeavors within the engineer society. Where the science faction tried to replicate the blood of the engineer deity and it went horribly wrong. Just like engineers in the comics, the last engineer has a deep hatred for humans that stems from humanity's deviation from the desired path set by the engineers. Engineers also harbor a strong aversion towards artificial beings, leading the last engineer to destroy David. In contrast, engineers hold such admiration for biological creations that even their ships are partially alive and they possess a strong distaste for electronic entities like David. The last engineer, driven by deep hatred for humanity, attempts to finish his 2,000-year-old mission to destroy all life on Earth. However, his plan goes awry again when the Prometheus vessel collides with the Juggernaut, halting his mission. The last engineer survives the explosion, and following a physical fight with Shaw, he becomes impregnated with the Trilobite, eventually birthing a creature resembling a deacon. The precise nature of this being remains ambiguous. While the mural depicts a deacon worshipped by engineers as a deity, it is uncertain if the creature birthed by the last engineer is the same as the godlike figure from the mural. The Ambassador Space Jockey In the comic book called The Alien, Earth is overwhelmed by a xenomorph outbreak, leaving the remaining humans in space stations orbiting the planet. The Ambassador Space Jockey arrives aboard a Juggernaut ship, seemingly offering assistance to humans in eradicating the Xenomorphs. However, when the Space Jockey meets the President and his council, he turns hostile, revealing his true objective – to exterminate all life on Earth. The President employs a unique weapon, a chestburster, which emerges from him to assault the Ambassador Space Jockey. 
The president makes the ultimate sacrifice to slow down the aggressor and one of the androids manages to send a signal to Earth to deploy missiles and destroy the juggernaut with the space jockey. This encounter reinforces the notion that engineers as species are inherently violent towards humans and other life forms, with a predominant mission of their annihilation. Beings on Planet 4 The inhabitants of Planet 4 are a subject of debate whether they are engineers or not, with even Ridley Scott providing conflicting explanations of who they actually are. In some interviews, Scott identifies them as engineers and claims that Planet 4 is the engineer homeworld. Yet in other interviews, he says that engineers will return in future movies to discover what David has done on their planet, suggesting that the Planet 4 inhabitants might not be the original engineers, but rather a colony just like Earth created by the actual engineers. These beings have some resemblance to engineers in Prometheus with their pale skin and hairless appearance. However, they have more differences than similarities. Their eyes aren't fully dark and look like human eyes. They are also similar in size to humans in contrast with the towering height of engineers. They wear primitive robes looking like peasants, a stark deviation from the technologically advanced appearance and proficiency with machinery exhibited by the engineers in Prometheus. While the Planet 4 residents had access to juggernauts which is revealed in a deleted scene, they seemed unfamiliar with their operation and had no knowledge on how to fly them. In addition, their city appeared somewhat ancient, with the Juggernaut docking station having a completely different design from the rest of the city, suggesting that it's not from this planet. All this evidence suggests that the Planet 4 beings might be a colony frequently visited by the actual engineers. Their joyful reception of David's Juggernaut indicates that they might have been anticipating the return of their celestial creators, engineers, for quite some time. However, there is another theory about who these beings might be. The inhabitants of Planet 4 wear robes similar to the engineers in the beginning of Prometheus, suggesting that they could belong to the same group. We don't have a clear reference to determine the height of engineers from the deleted scene in Prometheus, so they might have been shorter than the last engineer on LV-223, sharing similar height with humans and beings on Planet 4. This theory supports the idea mentioned previously that there might be two distinct factions of engineers. One faction could be more religious, wearing robes and constructing stone cities like the one we see in Alien Covenant. Meanwhile, the group on LV-223 could represent a scientific faction driven by a quest to unlock the secrets of the universe through science and biotechnology, even enhancing their height with genetic engineering. Had Prometheus not faced such critique upon its release, subsequent films might have delved deeper into the lore of the engineers and possibly explored the duality of science and religion. There is another subset of this theory which states that the engineers on LV-223 are drones or synthetics similarly to David. The original engineers could have created these bio-robots to conduct dangerous experiments since they didn't want to do it themselves. Just like Wayland made David smarter and stronger than any human, the original engineers also made their synthetics in the image of their ideal, which explains why the LV-223 engineer looks so perfect compared to humanoids on Planet 4. Fire and Stone Engineer The comic book Predator Fire and Stone features another engineer that was encountered on LV-223 about a hundred years after the events of Prometheus. Predator Ahab, having a long-standing ambition to hunt engineers, teams up with his human ally Galgo to track the space jockey to LV-223. Upon locating the engineer, a fierce battle breaks down between Ahab and the space jockey. Despite Ahab's efforts using his wrist gauntlet to inflict a wound on the engineer's face, the engineer retaliates with immense strength, injuring Ahab severely by fracturing his arm and leg. He launches several spears, one of which pierces the engineer's chest, yet the engineer remains unfazed. Then Galgo aids Ahab by firing a laser gun which slows the engineer for a few moments. In a last ditch effort, Ahab activates his self-destruct mechanism to obliterate the ship and the engineer. 
Ahab later returns to the wreckage securing the engineer's skull as a trophy. Life and Death Engineers In the comic book series Predator Life and Death, two other engineers are introduced. Colonial Marines, while chasing a Yaucha clan, arrive on LV-797 and stumble upon a juggernaut ship. Inside, they find an engineer in stasis within the sarcophagus. Upon awakening, this engineer pilots the juggernaut to LV-223. Once there, he awakens another engineer who is notably aggressive and hostile. Together, these engineers devise a plan to annihilate all life on the moon, targeting both the indigenous life forms and the colonial marines who had followed the engineer from LV-797. In a fierce battle, the colonial marines, with assistance from Predator Ahab, managed to overpower the space jockeys. Thank you guys for watching. What are your thoughts about the original space jockey and other engineers introduced in the prequels? Should they have kept them as two separate races and who do you think is the original space jockey? Like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more alien content. My name is Croft and I'll see you in the next video.